He is a simple study at this point. Trump is toxic. With a former president facing legal jeopardy. Even as he refuses to concede, Donald Trump is reshaping policies and disrupting government norms to the very end. Crazy. It, it's insanity. It's, it's, it's just so baseless from any sense of reality, it's detached from reality. Major corporate news media outlets are playing an active role in the 2020 election fraud. They are doing so in broad daylight. They have participated in carrying out a massive psychological operation over the course of the past year, and arguably the past several years, seeding audience expectations and preparing at least half of the U.S. public to accept what increasingly appears to be a stolen election. Tomorrow is President-elect Joe Biden's 78th birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. President, said Republicans to Trump. I know what I saw, and I signed something saying that if I'm wrong, I can go to prison. Did you? Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. Yeah. Once again, that was their star witness. These media have laid the groundwork by way of their skewed reportage, commentary, and polling, and now, via blatant omission, to ultimately convince the American public that a man who barely campaigned and who could hardly get any people to attend the few rallies he did hold, won the U.S. presidency. This could not have been accomplished without the active support and participation of U.S.-based transnational media conglomerates. Those conglomerates, like Disney and Viacom, control the lion's share of broadcast channels, and similarly influential and duplicitous are the erudite thinking persons news media such as the New York Times that set the overall agenda and parameters of what and how current issues, events, and personas will be perceived and regarded. Their fawning on critical depictions of the Russian collusion investigation, for example, the impeachment proceedings, the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money, the novel coronavirus pandemic, the social justice protests and rioting, and now the 2020 presidential election and aftermath make their political allegiances abundantly clear. Like their Democratic Party cohorts, the major news media's sense of power and privilege, alongside their contempt of the average American's intelligence, calls to mind the most tyrannical regimes in history. This time around, the election may actually involve interference or even outright manipulation from foreign powers. And the guy that's making a ton of money, Gabriel Sterling, you listen up, Gabriel. You're not going to sell our votes to China. We're not going to vote on your damn machines made in China. As is suggested in evidence, of the Biden family's financial agreements with communist Chinese entities, a story that was quickly tossed down the memory hole by these very same news media with the aid of the social media giants. Uh, I think the important thing is that there'd be plenty of newspapers with plenty of different people controlling them so that there's a variety of viewpoint, that there's a choice for the public. Uh, This is the freedom of the press that is needed. Freedom of the press mustn't be one-sided just for a publisher to to, uh, to speak as he pleases. Because of their undeniably significant role in the lead-up to and aftermath of the 2020 election, these very news media are arguably accessories in sedition and or treason against the United States. And this is a charge that the company's directors, who are the ultimate decision makers, may not be able to defend against by hiding behind the First Amendment. By now, everyone knows CNN and Warner Media's Jeff Zucker. He's a major media executive, but Zucker and his peers at other news media can all be easily replaced, as they are the paper pushers carrying out their duties for the real media bosses, 
the boards of directors, who hire the likes of Zucker because he shares their values and morality, or lack thereof. He and his ilk share their views on how the country and the world should be ruled. It was always about being about that young generation, of being the place where they got the content they wanted in terms of entertainment, where they had a place to discuss the social issues, where we could bring those issues to them in a way that they could connect with. Their hatred of the populist incumbent and his hoi polloi base. And most of all, they together exhibit a fondness for the unquestioning obedience emanating from empty suits like Joe Biden and his proposed cabinet. The individuals responsible for manipulating mass opinion, misrepresenting and indeed sabotaging the U.S. election process, are not identifiable by common household names, unlike the products and personalities they promote. You won't see them watering their lawn or at the supermarket checkout. They wield more power than elected officials and yet together they could comfortably fit inside a small classroom. They oversee the handful of organizations that shape the views of hundreds of millions of minds and lives. The media barons recognize how everything that sees the light of day must meet their tacit approval. It is with their full and conscious awareness that they may either enlighten or deceive their mass audiences. And by dutifully paying our cable and internet bills, we invite their values and sleight of hand into our homes. And in the case of journalism, their trade is precisely akin to a mob syndicate, peddling a consistently faulty, fraudulent product that customers don't actually want, but are coerced into accepting, lest they be ridiculed and sidelined by these very same news media as conspiracy theorists. The Times also shared the 2018 National Reporting Award with the Washington Post for their in-depth coverage of Russian interference in the 2016 presidential election and the connections to the Trump campaign. Those attempting to flee the corporate news reservation for online alternatives are likewise confronted with attempts to thwart their escape, as a multitude of honest competitors have their platforms and even financial accounts shut down. Since they have made everyday people so accustomed to being shortchanged and lied to, with the expectations so suppressed, some have grown to accept decrepit journalism and commentary, so long as it is presented in an attractive and seemingly enlightened package. If you like what we're doing in these videos, please consider becoming a patron of MHP at Patreon slash Memory Hole. For MemoryHoleBlog.org, this is James Tracy.